All right, so thank you for the global tallies of the past 24 hours. We turn back now to more domestic coverage of the pandemic here. I have Kim Yonsen with me in the studio. Yonsen, welcome back. Thank you for having me, Sunny. Right, let's start with the lifting of vaccine passes at a number of facilities here in the country. Right now, so as of today, uh, vaccine passes are no longer required in venues where people don't really have to take their masks off. This includes large supermarkets, department stores, study rooms, museums, libraries, or movie theaters. But instead, eating or sampling food at the markets will not be allowed. There's still much confusion about what's going on with the vaccine passes for minors. The government's original plan was to enforce vaccine passes starting from March for those aged 12 to 18 as well, but has recently been thwarted by this whole administrative court's decision to suspend vaccine passes for underage citizens. The South Korean government is looking to appeal that injunction and is hoping to reach an agreement before March. Health authorities still remain adamant in that vaccine passes are needed to protect minors at venues like PC rooms, singing rooms and eateries. Right. And Yonsen, I hear vaccine pass exemptions, though, may be granted to more people in the near future. Tell us about that. Right. So we may expect some minor tweaks. Son young a senior health ministry official, said Tuesday that the government is looking to provide more vaccine pass exemptions. That announcement is due later this week. Currently, exemptions include people who have already recovered from COVID-19, those who couldn't complete their regimen due to adverse reactions, those who are immunocompromised or those who have been recommended by their doctors to not get vaccinated. We'll have to see who else will be exempt from the past requirements. I see. Meanwhile, Omicron has authorities here on high alert. Yonsen, tell us about that as well. Well, Omicron cases have more than doubled in just a week in South Korea. Health authorities combed out almost 2,700 new Omicron infections in a week, which made up around 27% of the analyzed case samples from new COVID-19 patients. It's quite a steep rise, considering that this figure jumped from 1.8% in the fourth week of December to 12.5% in just two weeks, and now it's at 27%. The health minister said Monday that the KDCA's forecasting model shows Omicron becoming the dominant strain by this weekend, it's already seeming like to uh, it's already seeming like it's the dominant strain in Cholabukdo province, which has seen more than 100 coronavirus cases for six days straight. Korea's COVID-19 alert level has been set at moderate for the second week in a row. Now that its medical capacity has a little more breathing room, but with Omicron, the risk may grow. Even though Omicron cases appear to cause more mild illnesses with only seven critical cases and six related deaths from more than 5,000 reported cases so far, the sheer volume of infections could overwhelm the health sector. Take a listen to what a health official said in a briefing on Monday afternoon. With Omicron quickly spreading, the number of patients may soar. We're currently changing the prevention system and patient response system to adapt to the Omicron variant's characteristics. Right, I see. All right, Yonsen, thank you for now, but do stay for more talks.